Hi there, today we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean Theorem, a little review of what you learned hopefully last year in 8th grade. So here we go. Let's recall first of all that there are different types of triangles, right? We have acute triangles where all the angles are less than 90 degrees, okay? We also have obtuse triangles where you have one angle that's larger than 90 degrees. And then we have special triangles that are known as right triangles. And with a right triangle, that means that one of the angles is equal to 90 degrees. In order for the Pythagorean theorem to work or be used, we have to be talking about a right triangle when we use the Pythagorean theorem. If we try with other types of triangles, it's just not going to work out. We don't have time to go into that today, but in maybe another time we could talk about that there. Okay. So the Pythagorean theorem says that when you have a right triangle, you have a couple different parts. You have parts known as the legs. This is a leg right here. And this is a leg right here. And the angle directly across from the 90 degree angle is called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay? So that's our hypotenuse. I feel like I spelled that wrong, but we'll figure that out another time. All right, so that's our hypotenuse there. That's the angle directly across from the right angle. So often the shorter sides are, well, the shorter sides are always called the legs, and the longer side is the hypotenuse, okay? It's always going to be the longer one, just the way it works out, okay? Now the Pythagorean theorem tells us this. It says that a leg squared plus another leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared, okay? So a leg squared plus a leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And we can find what's called the converse of that as well. We can find out missing parts by seeing, um, or we can see if something is a right triangle by seeing if this works out as well. Sometimes they give you numbers and they ask you, is there a right triangle? And you could figure out if it is, if this actually works. So let's show you, draw you a little picture here. Let's say I had a triangle that had a leg of four and another leg of three, and then it had the hypotenuse of five. Okay, and sometimes you can look this up and you'll see pictures like this, right? The idea is that if I had a square right here, okay, that had a length and width of 4 and 4, and I had a square right here of 3 and 3, that if I added those two squares together, the sum of those squares would be equal to the sum of this square right there. Okay, that the pink square plus the blue square would equal the green square. That's the idea of the Pythagorean theorem and how this is working, okay? Okay, there's a squared values. Well, what is the square 4 times 4? Well, 4 times 4 is 16. So the area of this square is 16. What's the area of this square? 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so 3 squared plus 4 squared, so far it gives us 9 plus 16. Let's take a look at the 5 here. This is a 5 by 5 squared. 5 times 5 is 25. So 5 squared is 25. Well, what is 9 plus 16? And it ends up actually being 25. So in this example, we can see that 3, 4, 5, right triangle, is a special kind of triangle that is a right triangle and it makes it's made up of perfect squares here, right? So we have a 3, 4, and 5. The area of each of these is, is squared becomes 9 and 16, which add together to give you the area of that one right there. And we could do this with other numbers as well, right? You could do it with smaller triangles, larger triangles, but this is what the Pythagorean theorem tells us, is that a leg squared plus a leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared there. Again, it only works for right triangles. Let's do some practice here. So let's say I have a triangle, it looks something like this. It's a right triangle, has a leg of two, and another leg of six, and then we have our C value here, which we just don't know. To solve this here, we have A squared, plus b squared equals c squared. For a, we're going to use 2 squared plus b, what did I say, 6 squared, and c, we don't know, is just c squared. So 2 squared is 4, 36 squared, or 6 squared is 36 equals c squared. 36 plus 4 is 40, and that equals c squared. 
Now, I want to get the C by itself, so I will take the square root of both sides, and I can leave it as square root of 40 equals C, and that would be an acceptable answer. I could leave it just like that. Sometimes they do want you to kind of work that out a little bit. If you wanted to break this apart, again, it's a totally different lesson, okay? You could think about what's inside of the 40, and 40 is 4 times 10, so it's kind of like the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. The square root of 4 is actually 2, so 10, I can't break apart anymore. Two, 10 becomes 2 times 5, and those aren't square numbers. So I could write this as 2 root 10 equals C, or I could use a calculator and say what's the square root of 40 and say 6.32 is about what the value of C is. Won't be perfect because it's probably going to be repeating decimal. But these would all work to say what is the length of that um, edge of the triangle right there using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, let's try another one. So here's a triangle here. We're going to have a 6 and let's have over here an 8 and a right triangle there. So again our formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What are we going to do? We're going to have a 6 and square it. We're going to have an 8 and square it and we're looking for c squared. So 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, and that's going to equal c squared. Combine those together and we have 100 equals c squared. Now we'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of 100 is actually 10. So the value here of c is simply going to be 10. And that's our value. So sometimes we get nice numbers to play with. Sometimes we get ones that are not quite so nice there. All right. Let's take a look at one for you to try on your own real quick. So here's a triangle. I want you to find out what the missing measurement is going to be for this triangle. It's a right triangle. It has a base of 5 and a height of 2. So go ahead and give that one a try right there. That's your little project. I'm going to press pause, let you do that. We'll come back and check it together in just a second. All right, here we go. Let's see what you got for that missing side length. So again, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we can do 2 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. So 4 plus 25 equals c squared. And 4 plus 25 is 29 equals c squared. We take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 29 equals c, OK? And we didn't really say this real quick, but the square root of a squared number means these eliminate each other, they cancel one another out, which is a whole other topic. But So our answer here is this value, missing value is a square root of 29. Maybe not a pretty number, but it is the number we're looking for, and it's just fine. <laughs> okay. So in this case here, we were provided with, in our first examples, all the legs, and we're looking for the unknown hypotenuse. Sometimes, though, sometimes, though, we are given one leg and hypotenuse, but we're not given the other leg. They give us this value maybe of 3. They say, well, we're not going to tell you what b is going to be, but we know the hypotenuse is going to be 12, right? That's the one across from there. Can we find the missing leg length? And the answer is, of course we can, because again, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if we said that was our a, if 3 squared plus b squared equaled 12 squared, then we have 9 plus b squared equals 144. We're going to subtract 9 from both sides to be left with b squared equals 135. Doesn't look like a friendly number already, but let's take the square root of both sides, meaning this is eliminated here, and b equals the square root of 135. Again, not a number I'm very familiar with here. I could put it into my calculator, do 135, and we could press the square root button and say, oh boy, I should have known. It's 11.61, and that's an 8, so I'm going to round that up to 6.2. All right, so it's about 11.62 is the length here. Now think about this. If you're just kind of wondering, is that right? Well, remember, these two lengths are always going to be shorter than this one. This is the long side, right? So the answer has to be less than 12 to be correct. So if you ended up with an answer greater than 12 right here, then you did something wrong. So make sure that your legs are going to be, each one individually, are less than 12, all right? They have to be less than 12. 
just the way it's going to work. All right, uh, let's see. So, got our solution there for that one. All right, let's have you give it a try here for one of those. I give you another triangle here. Missing a measurement. Again, these are not drawn to scale at all, it's just a measurement. So, we have five over here, we have A over here, and this has a length of 13. So go ahead and find the missing leg length right there. I'm going to pause, let you work on that here. Here we go. All right, so how do we solve it? We do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We don't know the A, so we'll keep A squared there. The B we're calling 5, so 5 squared. And C squared is going to be 13 squared. So we have a squared plus 25 equals 13 times 13 is 169. Now I'll do a little algebra. We're going to get the a by itself is the idea. So a squared comes down and that's going to equal 169 minus 25 is 144. Take the square root of both sides and this one does become a nice number. So a is actually equal to 12. So we have a value for 12 a value for A, which is going to be 12 for that one right there. Okay, so those are some basic ways that we tend to use the hypotenuse, uh, sorry, about the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing legs of triangles and so on and so forth. Something that you did a lot more of in eighth grade. Okay, it's a big part of eighth grade. Now let's do one more way that you might see the, the Pythagorean theorem come into play, and that is that sometimes we use a coordinate plane and you have points on a coordinate plane that you then have to find out the distance between them and you can use the Pythagorean theorem for this as well. Okay, so I'm going to draw some lines here. This is not graph paper obviously, it's just my paper. Nothing fantastic, but it'll work. Okay, and I'm going to put a point right here at negative 2, comma negative 1. And I'm going to put another point here at 2, comma 2. and draw a line in between them there. Okay, and if I asked you the length of this line right there, could you figure that out? Well, the answer is sure you could. And the way you'd figure that out is by using the Pythagorean theorem. You see, we're on the axis here. We have a base that goes from this point all the way to this point right here. And we also have a height that goes from here to here. Now on a coordinate plane, this forms a nice right angle, doesn't it? Right? We have a nice right angle. So because we have a right angle, I can say what this length is going to be. Now to do that though, I have to find out what is this length, first of all. So this length, how far is it from here to here? Well this point is, first of all, at negative 2 comma negative 1. So we're looking at the distance from here at negative 2 all the way to positive 2. Why do I write negative 2? Sorry about that. It should be positive 2. <laughs> okay. So to find the distance from here to here, you can think about the absolute value of the first value, negative 2, minus the second value, x value. This is our x and our x. Right? So negative 2 minus 2. When we subtract, we think about adding the opposite. So the signs are the same, we find the sum and keep the sign the same. But the absolute value of negative 4 is simply 4. Again, if you weren't sure about all that part, you could just check and see and count it and say, well, I went from here, I went 1, 2, 3, 4, right? If you're using graph paper, you could tell it's 4 spots away or 4 units away, okay? So our base is 4. Let's just draw this over here real quick. We know we have a base of 4. Now for the height, I can again look at the height. That's the difference between these two values here from the 2 to negative 1. So the difference is 2 minus a minus 1. And when you subtract a negative, it's like adding. Again, absolute value. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So the distance from here to here is going to be 3. So here to here is 3. And again, you could check it out, right? We go up one, two, three. That's our height for that shape there. So now we could use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of that one there. 
it's going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, what we're looking for right there. And 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and that all equals 25. So to get c by itself, we take the square root of both sides, and the value of c is equal to 5. So this length here is going to be equal to 5, which is the same one right there, 5. So you can actually solve it there. We're not using what's called the distance formula. We're using the Pythagorean theorem to solve what that's going to be. Okay. Let's do one more like these for you to try. Let's see if you can try this out with the um, coordinate plane. So let me draw one out here for you. This is number three for you to try. And draw, sketch this out here the best I can. I'm going to go out here one, two. So here's negative two. And go up to one. 2, there's positive 2. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, out to 6. We're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So my first point is going to be right here at negative 2, comma, negative 4. And my other point is going to be at 6, comma, 2. And we're looking at the line in between those from there to there. And we're wondering what is this distance going to be from here to here? How far is it from there to there? Oops, get you back on the screen here. Sorry about that. So I'm going to pause that, let you work on that. Again, use the coordinate plane to figure out that distance. Use the coordinate plane to get your numbers for your base and height, and then figure out your uh, green line by Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to pause here, let you work on it. We'll come back and check your last one in just a second. Alrighty, so to do this here, what we're looking at is we can say, well, I know that I can basically draw my baseline here and draw my height right here to make that 90 degree angle. Now I have a right triangle going from here and then up to here, and these become my values I'll work with to find out that value there. I could use the math part which says let's find the difference. This point by the way, let's see, we're going to be at 6 comma and we're down 4. So this point is 6 comma negative 4. So we find the difference between our x values and our difference between our y values. Okay, negative 2 minus a positive 6 that become an absolute value that becomes a negative 8 becomes a distance of 8 right here and over here we have absolute value of 2 minus a minus 4 right my 2 value minus 4 so that becomes adding so 2 plus 4 is 6 so my distance here is 6 and again if you weren't sure about that what you could simply do is just kind of just look on the number line where am I going I'm gonna go from negative 2 to negative 1 to 0, to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, which is going to be 8 little hops to get me there. And over here, I'm going from negative 4 up to positive 2. So we have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, which is a total again of 6 hops right there. So now that I have a base and I have a height, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the green one, which is again a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and a, we'll call that the 8 squared, plus the b, which is 6 squared, equals the green, which is c squared. So 64 plus 36 equals c squared. 100 equals c squared. Take the square root of both sides. Square root of 100 is 10. So 10 equals c. So the length of this line was 10, right there. Alright guys, that's really it for today. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.